Notice now. Okay, now we get to this part. All Christians are to be believers. Goes without saying, right? We're all to be believers. Now watch. Believers are expected to preach the gospel, set the captives free, heal the sick, cast out devils, get people saved, healed, delivered, filled with the Spirit, and to make disciples. Can we all agree on that? That's the basic job description of a believer, of a Christian. Okay? Now, fivefold ministers. Now understand, a fivefold minister has to be a believer first and do the things that it says. But then he is also given added responsibility as a gift to the body of Christ to train, equip, and to cause the people to grow up into Christ in all things. Can we agree with that? Okay. So, you know, but there is a division, a, a, you know, a, a parting, if you want to say it, uh, between believers and fivefold ministry. Amen? Fivefold ministry are believers who have been given added responsibility. All right? Now, let's keep going. Fivefold ministers gifts of the body of Christ and must also function as believers. Not everyone is called to be a fivefold minister to the body. You got that? Not everybody. Now watch. There are people that are called to minister to the body of Christ in a five-fold capacity. We know that. And then there are people that are called to be believers, but not in a five-fold capacity. Amen? Not everybody is called the five-fold minister, right? But everybody gets to do the fun stuff. Healing the sick, casting out devils, preaching the gospel, making disciples. See, that's all the fun stuff. The five-fold ministry gets to do the fun stuff because they're believers, but then they also get to do the stuff that's not always so fun. Why? Because they have the added responsibility of growing people up. Now, <clears throat> all right, some people are called into a five-fold ministry, but they're not ready yet. They're still growing, and they're not five-fold ministry yet. They're called to it. Uh, Paul was mentioned in Antioch that said there were prophets and teachers there, didn't mention apostles. And so, but he was a teacher, prophet, if you want to say that, but he was in that group, but he was not yet an apostle. He was called to be an apostle, but he was not yet an apostle. Does this make sense? So he was training and growing. So there are people who are called a five-fold ministry, but they're not ready. They're usually spiritually immature. Uh, what that means is they are, they are not spiritually mature enough to fulfill the role. Okay? Why? Because we're told not to put novices into a position of responsibility or authority. Right? Now watch. Knowing scripture and information, having information, doesn't qualify a person for the fivefold ministry. Okay? Understand. It can qualify them to function as a believer. But just because you know scripture good doesn't mean you're called a fivefold ministry. Okay? Mature, now notice. I didn't want to do all this because it, it, it's, I want to move on, right? But there are things that I have to do. Okay? So, mature ministers can discern between what God gives them for the body and what God is saying to them personally. Do you understand? And when God tells you, see, if you know you're called to ministry, you have a tendency to think that everything that God gives you is for you to preach because that's your heart. You want to preach. You want to get the message to the people. But maturity is best demonstrated by knowing what God has given you for people and what he's given you for you. In other words, where God's working on you. And a lot of times people will stand up and they will say things that they will present it as though it's an exhortation or something for the church when in reality God was dealing with them and it wasn't meant to be brought out to the church at that point. Now, usually, I mean, it's, if it's good for one, it's good for all, so it's not something that would be bad, but we just have to discern what God is saying and when he's saying it. And a lot of times, people will be saying things that God isn't saying to them directly, and the reason it's coming out is because God has been saying it to that person. Does this make sense? Okay. See, if you get... I don't know why God's been doing this this week, but he's been doing it a lot. If you'll notice, it's like he's given these things about how the things of the Spirit work so that people can see not just the big stuff, but how the mortar that fits between the bricks. Amen. All right? Now, quickly here. Um, if, yeah, if they can't discern that, then they aren't mature enough to actually minister to the body. They can still minister on the street. They can minister to people individually, uh, people they know, things like that, but not to the body. Because to minister to the body, you have to not just 
preach a message, but you have to be able to bring it out the way the Holy Spirit knows the people that are present, even by internet, can receive it, hear it, and embrace it, right? That doesn't mean water it down. I'm not talking about, you know me, I don't water stuff down. I'm not talking about watering or diluting. I'm talking about that there are people here different ways. And some things you'll say a certain way and they won't hear you. But you could say it another way and they would hear you. So the Holy Spirit has to figure out the way. He knows already. But he has to get it to us how to say things in a way that everybody can get it. Does that make sense? Now, notice. Uh, if they can't discern that, there aren't, they aren't mature enough to minister to the body. That means they're still immature believers, but they're growing up, okay? Now, Paul mentioned the dispensation of the gospel that he had been given, right? Now, he was called to the Gentiles. Peter was called to the Jews. Now, this is one of the reasons why Paul had so many problems. Some of them he couldn't really avoid, but some of them were self-inflicted, okay? Understand that. Now, what that, notice here, this is amazing how God does this. Paul was called to the Gentiles. Peter was called to the Jews. Now think about that. Here you have probably one of the smartest Pharisees, one of the smartest people in the law, didn't get to go to the Jews, the people of the law. Had to go to the Gentiles, the heathen. He takes a fisherman, untrained, and sends him to these Jewish lawyers. Why would God do that? You would think, God, it, that doesn't make sense. Be smart. Send the smart Jew to the Jews and the unlearned fisherman to the heathen. But God said, no, because then Paul would rely on his intelligence and not on me. And Peter, he would just hang out with the boys and talk about him, probably end up going fishing again. Right? But instead, he goes to the Jews where that, they keep him on his toes and he's kind of saying, Holy Spirit, you got to tell me, you got to tell me, you got to tell me. So notice how God does. He doesn't always do things the way we think he should. Amen? So, now real quick, finishing up right here. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. <clears throat> the reason Paul had these problems was because he often went to people who would not receive him. And you'll notice that's what happened. He was always trying to go to the Jews. They always kicked him out, beat him, stoned him, whipped him, all kinds of stuff. And then he finally goes, okay, I'm going to the Gentiles. You don't think you're worthy of eternal life? I will go to the Gentiles. And so he ended up going to them and then didn't suffer near as much, to be honest with you. So now notice, Christians, future ministers, often have a hard time accepting that what is on their heart is for them and not necessarily supposed to be a message to the church, at least not at that time. Often they deliver a message that God is trying to get them to focus on in their own lives, not something to be delivered to the local body, right? But you get excited, and if you're called, then you know that. Being able to discern is a primary distinguishing mark of spiritual maturity, not just knowing what, but also knowing when and how. All of that comes in. You, just because you know what doesn't mean that's what you're supposed to do that way. You also have to know when and how. 